I'm Nadja Swart for Biz News, and I'm joined today by Dr. Ashley Banjan. He's a bioflex practitioner and a neurologist. Dr. Banjan, just by way of introduction, what is your background? Hi, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, yes, I'm a specialist neurologist currently uh, practicing at Life into Bainey Hospital for the past, what, 13 years or so. I've um, also taken up um, bioflex laser therapy as part of my clinical practice for the past three years. And I think we were going to be going to a bit of a discussion about how we could perhaps use this as a form of modality in the condition that we're going to be discussing today. Thank you again. No worries. Thank you for your time. Um, so we're talking about long COVID and the treatment of long COVID. Just to sort of get into it, can you tell me what the most prevalent symptoms are of long COVID? So, yes, from what we have extrapolated from the clinical data and all the research that's been going on since COVID started for mm. almost uh, two and a quarter years now, I would say that, you know, firstly, the symptoms of long COVID um, have to be present for a certain duration after you have the infection. So most patients don't really have the, the symptoms ongoing. So I would say usually within four weeks, most patients have the symptoms have actually, you know, improved. So there's no further progression or persistence, rather, of uh, symptoms. And the symptoms we're talking about are um, shortness of breath, chronic fatigue, um, pain that can be from hip pain to headaches to pelvic pain to arthritic pain to, you know, neuropathy type pain. And as us as neurologists, we're seeing a lot of patients who've got this brain fog, if we can call it. So a lot of memory loss, concentration difficulties, and that's usually accompanied with some sleep difficulties. So these patients are presenting with these symptoms from the you know, definition, which is a bit unclear at this moment, but the consensus is that long COVID is usually persistent of symptoms beyond four weeks. And that's the CDC and the NICE guidelines. Does this long COVID sort of happen subsequent immediately to COVID infection, or are you sort of free, you're clear of COVID, and then after a certain amount of time, you're hit with long COVID symptoms? So from the, from the cohorts of patients that they've looked at um, internationally in China and been published in, in Lancet 2021, they actually looked at a six-month duration and followed up these patients after being diagnosed with COVID. And there's no real, I would say, break in between from clinical diagnosis to uh, symptom, you know, re-onset. So symptoms are usually persistent. They just don't get better. So that's what they're describing. And in a variety of patients will present with a different symptom complex. Certain patients might just have ongoing headaches. Certain patients, um, I have difficulties in breathing. My chest specialist can't find the cause. The x-rays are normal. My chest just isn't better. I've got a dry, persistent cough, um, other symptoms. My pain in my hip for my operation two years ago, all of a sudden starts to flare up. And that's the patients that we are trying to see, we are seeing now with all these different symptom complexes. Um, so there's not really a, a stop in symptom duration. There's actually more of a continuation all right. and um, rather than anything else. Yes. And so... <laughs> I mean, you have to have compassion for these people because up until now, the doctors that I have spoken to about treatment for long COVID patients is pace yourself and TLC. That's about the extent of it. But you are now pioneering treatment photobiomodulation therapy. What is that? Well done. <laughs> I practiced. <laughs> and you pronounced it well. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Photobiomodulation. It sounds like a very, a very complex uh, form of, you know, uh, modality. But let's let's just break it up simply. Right? Photo meaning light, okay. bio meaning life, modulation change. So changing life using light therapy. So this has been out for about sixty odd years, and obviously in different clinical contexts. Uh, I'm a neurologist, so I'm, I'm I am you know, more into the in the research in neurological disorders. So I'm seeing all these patients that are presenting with a lot of brain fog and chronic headaches in the post-COVID sort of spectrum. 
But yeah, the therapy is, has been has really taken off in the last decade, I would say. Okay. And um, a lot of research has gone into um, neurological conditions, neurodegenerative disorders, chronic pain syndromes. There's a lot of other indications, including dermatological, aesthetics, etc., that you will see on, on social media platforms and so forth. So we're just applying that knowledge now into applications in clinical diagnosis of neurological conditions. Mm-hmm. And the results seem to be quite outstanding. That's incredible. How quickly are the results improving? Well, from experience in seeing these patients, I think each individual patient is different. So those patients that do have complex pathologies like type 2 diabetes, kidney failure, um, previous stroke or rheumatoid arthritis, they do take a little bit longer. But because we're modulating the underlying pathological mechanism, which is in our case, what we think is predominantly inflammatory based and neural inflammatory based. So there's inflammation in the brain. We see patients getting better over two weeks. And in fact, not even after a lot of treatment. And in fact, we don't even advocate treatment every single day. Mm. We're doing treatments for these patients sometimes twice or even three times a week. And within two weeks, all of a sudden they can breathe again. They can walk upstairs they don't feel that fatigue and that exertional dyspnea that they have usually. Mm-hmm. The brain fog starts to settle after time. They start sleeping better. And overall, they feel more alive. And that's the key. Is there a prerequisite that they have to have had these symptoms for four weeks subsequent to their COVID infection for them? No, not necessary at all. Not okay. necessary at all. In fact, there are case studies that have been published um, that you can see online with using photobiomodulation patients in um, COVID-19 pneumonia. Mm. So those patients are in hospital and they're administering the therapy in hospital and they actually have actually done better. Mm. So those patients who are being initially treated with COVID pneumonia do, do well. Mm. So if we had treat, it's always prevention better than cure. Mm. So the longer you wait the longer is the duration of neuroinflammation and then the longer the inflammatory cascade has time to cause all the changes, especially in the brain. Mm. So it's then also longer to treat to start showing some sort of improvement. So the quicker we catch it, the better. Have you found that there's any correlation between those that are likely to develop long COVID and the severity of that person's COVID infection? Um, actually, none. Certain patients, I mean, there are risk factors for patients who have developed, you know, COVID. And this is from the cohorts that have been looked at over the last couple of years. And they seem to think that, you know, female patients are, are more at, at risk of developing long COVID. Um, if you're older than 40, sorry, Nadia, yeah, <laughs> over the age of 40, um, patients who are overweight, so obesity, okay. and patients who have pre existing conditions like uh, type 2 diabetes chronic renal failure, hypertension, those that are smokers, in fact, and have pre-existing strokes, so neurological disease. These are all the high-risk patients that have a higher tendency of developing a COVID uh, or long COVID or post-COVID syndrome. Yeah, I actually read the Financial Times reported recently that women are twice as likely to develop long COVID. So this is, in fact, correct. This is what you're finding. That's right. That's correct. That's correct. They're still trying to elucidate why that is. Mm. Perhaps, you know, there are more patients who have, for example, chronic pain syndromes and chronic inflammation in, in female patients who've got, for example, rheumatoid arthritis mm-hmm. or osteoarthritis or hip conditions. And that's perhaps, you know, peripheral inflammation might be a contributory cause in, in that cohort of patients. So perhaps that's the reason why. And the the treatment, is it available nationwide or, I mean, just for viewers that are struggling with this and, I mean, really up until now I have thought that there's nothing that, they can, be, that can be done about it. Where can they go yeah. for treatment facilities that actually offer this? Yeah, there are not many um, um, photobiomodulation clinics around in the country. I'm based in Durban at Intibani Hospital, mm-hmm. um, the Durban Neuro Laser Clinic, and they've um, obviously put it out there on social media platforms and stuff as well, informing patients and, uh, about these type of conditions. Because as you mentioned, there was a lot of skepticism initially about even the diagnosis. 
is it really a condition? Yeah. Is it is it not just patients, yeah. you know, rambling on after the initial um, viral infection, much like, you know, what they had after Spanish flu? And the same thing happened then. They call it a chronic viral encephalitic syndrome or something. They didn't even, oh, yeah. you know, have the basic pathogenesis of what's going on then, but it seems to be sort of the same, you know. So heading back to your question, yes, you should try to locate if, if you have a, a, a photobiomodulation clinic around you, there are some in Durban, there are some in Cape Town, some in Johannesburg. So yes, um, I guess that it's all dependent on the, the treating doctors or therapists um, there if they are comfortable treating COVID and post-COVID uh, syndromes, knowing what they're actually targeting. So that's also very important, like knowing the underlying you know, treatment mechanisms and how you would go about administering the treatment and how often for each individual patient. And just to close off with, what does this treatment look like? Uh, uh, you know, the the light that you use, um, can you just sort of paint a picture for me? So we have um, a treatment arrays, which is basically a little instrument that is contoured. Mm -hmm. So we can contour it on your brain or over your neck, over your shoulder region, for example, for a patient who's got, you know, painful sort of arthritis or so forth. Yeah. And it consists of a lot of, LED lights. Okay. So we use red light as well as near infrared light therapy, which has a very potent anti inflammatory effect. And that's what we're targeting All right. inflammation. Are there any negative side effects of this LED light? Surprisingly, none. Wow. And that's why it seems to be more effective uh, with less side effects, non invasive. So there's no needles involved. There's no coming to the surgery, put up an IV line, and you have to sit in this room here with a drip connected up to you. None of that. So it's non-invasive, easy application, 45 minutes or so treatment, maybe twice or three times a week, depending on symptoms, symptom complex and each individual patient or so, where we're delivering the light and near-infrared light, specifically over the, the brain itself, over the skull region, and depending on each individual patient, sometimes there's a peripheral driver, like a rheumatoid arthritis patient. We'd also target the peripheral information as well. So we use the LED arrays as well as a, a laser probe, mm -hmm. which has a much more direct light penetration so we can get deeper into, into structures, especially brain penetration. Mm -hmm. So we use a combination of LED arrays as well as laser probe. Okay. All painless, non-invasive therapy. That's awesome. Well, Dr. Banjan, thank you so much again for your time and for the work that you're doing. Fantastic. Thank you for the opportunity. Take care.